This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over static manual release of the tensor fasciolata and gluteus minimus. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you're watching it for educational purposes and that you are a licensed manual therapist or student on your way to becoming a licensed manual therapist. Personal trainers, this technique probably doesn't fall within your scope, although you could use the palpation portion of this video in an educational setting to help you learn your anatomy. I'm going to have my friend Melissa come out. She's going to help me demonstrate this technique. Now all of these techniques follow a very similar protocol, oversimplified. That protocol would look something like palpate and compress. We're going to break it down a little further than that. We want to be able to palpate and differentiate these tissues from other muscles in the area. We do get bonus points for knowing our trigger points, so if you know where the common trigger points in the tensor fasciolata are, the common trigger points in the gluteus minimus are, you will narrow your search field a bit and you won't have to search around quite so much to find those local points of overactivity. We do have to keep in the back of our head, is there any tissues in this area that compression or abrasion might insult? So are there any nerves, lymph nodes, arteries? There are some nerves in this area, but usually they're fairly small nerves. And if you happen to give somebody a tingling sensation or a burning sensation, it's pretty easy to get out of the way of those nerves by moving backward or forward. Last, we have to figure out what position can we put Melissa in that will add some tension to this muscle. So we pin down those nodules, those trigger points, those locally overactive muscle fibers, right? We also have to make sure she's comfortable and possibly most importantly that we're comfortable, that we're using our own body mechanics to apply pressure so that we don't wear ourselves out over the course of one session or one day, one week, or even one career. We don't wanna be using so much of our hands that we only get a couple of these techniques before we're tired. Now let's start with our palpation and the anatomy involved in the tensor fasciolata and gluteus minimus here. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to find is the top of the iliac crest here, right? So the top of her pelvis, because I'm gonna to wanna to follow that to her ASIS. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the top of her pants over the top of her ASIS so I know where that's located. I'm then gonna go ahead and find her greater trochanter. And we've actually put a little dot here on Melissa's pants, right, so that we can mark the greater trochanter so that you guys can see it, if not in this view, in the close-up recap. If I go from ASIS to greater trochanter and then back up the mid-axillary line to the to the iliac crest here, in that triangle is my TFL. And right in the middle of that triangle is where the TFL trigger point usually is and we have that marked off. Now the gluteus minimus is just behind the TFL, right? So the trigger point is also in the middle of that muscle, generally speaking, falls just behind the mid-axillary line above the greater trochanter. So we're dealing in this, this little triangle right here below her pelvis and above her greater trochanter. Now to add some tension to this muscle, I'm gonna kinda use a modified Obers test. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring her leg back. And if you watched the vastus lateralis video, I talked about how we should put the vastus medialis on top of the calf because what you don't want to end up with is kneecap on top of ankle because that hurts when you start pressing. So we're going to take the meaty part of her, of her uh, quad here, put it on the meaty part of her lower leg so that when I start pressing, we don't, we're just compressing soft tissues. We don't have any problems there. Now, I'm going to palpate across these fascicles. This is a fan-shaped muscle. Right, a fan-shaped muscle whose fascicles run this way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna palpate from anterior to posterior to find the tightest fascicles. And then I can start, once I find some tight fascicles, I can start moving a little bit more distal or a little bit more proximal to find the tightest point within those fascicles. 
and then of course I'm just going to apply my pressure. I can use a thumb over thumb technique, I can use my pisiform over thumb technique, I can use my inner thenar groove over thumb technique here. And then you'll notice I have the table pretty low here with Melissa so that I can just lean in until I get a little increase in, in tissue density here. I don't want to go further than that. I don't want pain. I don't want the tissues to all of a sudden guard on me because I'm pushing in so hard. Just, just right up until I hit some tissue resistance. How's that feel, Melissa? Yeah, that's, that's tender. This muscle definitely tends to get tender. A lot of people talk about IT band tightness and iliotibial band syndrome and runner's knee. Guys, your IT band is connective tissue. It's not muscular tissue. Your IT band doesn't get tight, but your TFL will get overactive and short and pull your IT band tight. So in a lot of these individuals, what you'll find is they have very sensitive trigger points in their TFL and releasing them usually does them some good. Sometimes you have to be a little gentler. So sometimes the 30 seconds to 120 seconds static hold doesn't work out as well as maybe the five seconds on, five seconds off. All right, increasing pressure a little bit each time, trying to desensitize that area a little bit. Be gentle with people. You crush somebody right off the bat they might not come back and if they don't come back you're not going to have a chance to fix their problem. Now after I get a release in her tensor fascia lata, I can just keep moving my thumb back, keep using that same anterior to posterior strum of her fascicles to find other tight fascicles. The gluteus minimus guys is basically the tensor fascia lata's nasty cousin. They both muscles do the same joint actions, both muscles are involved in the same dysfunctions. The only difference is the gluteus minimus does not have an attachment to the iliotibial band. Once I find some tight fascicles, I'm then going to narrow in by going proximal to distal or distal to proximal to find the, the tightest point within those, those fascicles. And again, I'm going to apply my pressure. I could do the five second holds on and off, increasing pressure each time. She was really sensitive, or I could go in until I meet tissue resistance, hold for 30 seconds to 120 seconds. All right guys, in the next video you'll see, or in the next section, you're gonna see us do a close up recap so you can see exactly where I'm putting my hands. All right guys, for the close up recap, let's start with palpation. The top of her iliac crest is right here. Right? I'm going to put her, the front of her pants over the top of her ASIS. And then we'll kind of adjust here, make sure our, our little markings there are over her greater trochanter. So we used this little beige button to mark the greater trochanter. ASIS, greater trochanter, up the mid axillary line. In between this triangle right here is her tensor fascia lata, that nice fan-shaped muscle, and you can see we've marked off that trigger point, which is basically in the middle of that muscle. You notice just posterior to that trigger point is another trigger point marking, this one representing the gluteus minimus, which again falls behind the tensor fascia lata, but doesn't have an attachment to the iliotibial band. So as far as my palpation, I'm going to use those anterior to posterior kind of strumming with it with a broad thumb here find the the most overactive fascicles there and then move in this case since I'm starting so proximal I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving distal until I find the tightest point maybe even a little nodule within those fascicles that's where I'm gonna apply my compression I'm gonna use my dummy thumb and then either my inner thenar groove here or my pisiform to go ahead and apply pressure. I do find it helpful to add a little bit of a, a distal to proximal uh, angle to this to help pin down that trigger point. I'm just going to go up to tissue resistance and then hold it for 30 seconds to 120 seconds. I did mention that this area does get very tender on people. You guys have heard of iliotibial band syndrome, runner's knee, 
a lot of that comes from the tensor fascia a lot of being overactive in those individuals and pulling on the iliotibial band and it'll get it'll just get tender to the touch so that five seconds on five seconds off five seconds on a little harder five seconds off to help desensitize is sometimes a better way to start this technique and then of course after I, I finish releasing this trigger point I can just keep going with my anterior to posterior strums and I'll find my next trigger point in the gluteus minimus and again I'll just use my my pisiform over thumb grip here apply pressure until I until I hit that first tissue resistance and hold for 30 to 120 seconds so there you guys have it ASIS iliac crest greater trochanter TFL gluteus minimus behind it and trigger points right in the middle of those muscles. So there you guys go. That was static manual release of the tensor fascia lata and gluteus minimus. As I've said in all of our other manual release videos, make sure that by the time you put your hands on somebody, you are 80% sure that those are muscles that need to be targeted with manual release techniques. And you should know that from your movement assessments. Move, uh, manual release techniques by themselves make terrible assessments be practicing these techniques often and if you can with your fellow professional Th the ability to practice with somebody who also does manual release techniques to have these techniques done on you is a learning that you are not going to get from this video and no matter how well I speak or how well we demonstrate this stuff on video you need to have that practical application before you try this on your patients and clients. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot from our video and this technique. I look forward to hearing about your outcomes.